Hey, it's Jordan with Status Quo. President Biden kind of, sort of, finally said he might impose a windfall tax or push for a windfall tax on the fossil fuel industry that is raking us over the coals while laughing to the bank. Uh, this is from the Associated Press. Uh, Biden to float windfall tax on energy producers. President Joe Biden on Monday will raise the possibility of imposing a windfall tax on energy companies as his administration aims to combat high gas prices just days before the midterm elections. The White House said Biden will deliver remarks to respond to, quote, reports over recent days of major oil companies making record setting profits, even as they refuse to help lower prices at the pump for the American people. A person familiar with the matter said Biden will float imposing a tax on the profits of energy companies as he seeks to pressure them to lower prices for consumers. The person spoke on the condition of anonymity. Quote, oil companies made billions in profits this quarter, Biden tweeted on Saturday. They're using these record profits to pay out their wealthy shareholders instead of investing in production and lowering costs for Americans. It's unacceptable. It's time for these companies to bring down prices at the pump. High prices at the pump have exacerbated inflation, blah, 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 blah. Congress would have to approve any additional taxes on the energy producers, which would be a tall order in the current Congress where Democrats have narrow, narrow control over the House and the Senate. Where do you begin? Uh, to the, you know, just passively observing, uh, passively observing political person. Uh, this all sounds great. Uh, wow, the president's going to actually call for action against these fossil fuel companies. Um, this should have been done months ago. Sure, he cannot unilaterally do it. He would need Congress to do it. But you have Democrats have a very, very narrow majority. And I don't know. You tell me. Do you think it might be a popular position to take and a popular political crusade to take to tar and feather the Republican Party as the party that is blocking a windfall tax on these oil companies as you're paying in some cases, over $4 a gallon of gas. Um, in on the West Coast, at some points, over $6 a gallon of gas. Biden could have done this months ago and said it's the Republicans who vote no. They could have pushed a vote in the House. It's the Republicans voting no against taxing the fossil fuel companies who are the reason you're feeling pain at the pump. He didn't do this. Why? Because as I always say, Wall Street is the biggest investor in the fossil fuel industry. And Wall Street is the Democratic Party's sugar daddy and mama. And Biden, Democratic Party, do not want to do anything to upset Wall Street as they're currently begging Wall Street for money for the midterm elections. That's what corruption looks like. We're going to wink and a nod that we might kind of sort of, what are they, floating the possibility of a windfall tax? They could have done this months ago. And by the way, it would have been extremely popular. And maybe those polls might turn around in terms of people trusting the Republicans more than the Democrats on inflation. Uh, I mean, just look at this. It's obscene. This is so easy. A third grader can figure out how to campaign on this. Last quarter, Exxon recorded more profit than America's two largest companies combined. Almost $20 billion in profit, excuse me, million, over $20 billion. I mean, it's just obscene, obscene how much money these oil companies are making. And now Biden sort of kind of tepidly calling for a windfall tax. By the way, Biden a while ago, as I've been saying, could have said, we're pulling the federal subsidies for these fossil fuel companies. Look at this. American taxpayers currently foot the bill for up to 15 billion in direct federal subsidies to the fossil fuel industry every year. In 2020, the oil, gas, and coal industry spent more than 115 million lobbying Congress in defense of these giveaways for an over 13,000 percent return on investment. Let me repeat: an over 13,000 percent return on investment. Even while the country is facing an unprecedented health and economic crisis, the fossil fuel industry is bringing all its political might to extract even more subsidies. These corporate handouts are driving unprecedented expansion of U.S. fossil fuel development. Over the next 10 years, we are on track to account for 60 percent uh, global growth in the oil and gas production. I don't know. 
sounds like a popular political position when people are desperately hurting at the pump to say, yeah, this $15 billion that the, that we're giving to these fossil fuel companies, if they don't lower prices by at least a, do a dollar a gallon uh, by the end of the week, gone. Well, JFK did something similar in 1962 uh, when a lot of steel companies were uh, conspiring uh, to price fix, to increase the cost of steel. JFK said, all right, well, I'm pulling the submarine contracts that were supposed to go to U.S. Steel and other steel companies, and I'm going to give them to companies that aren't artificially increasing their steel prices. And guess what? The steel companies folded like a cheap tent. The Biden didn't do that. Why? Same thing. The Wall Street donors that have bought the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, because we live in the United Corporations of America, uh, they don't want fossil fuel company. Uh, they don't want fossil fuel companies having taxes, uh, extra taxes on them. They don't want federal subsidies being pulled from the fossil fuel companies because then it affects Wall Street's bottom line. That is the corrupt cesspool we live in in the United Corporations of America. Uh, if you need a little more information, let me play part of this more perfect union video on what's driving all of this uh, record profits for the oil industry. But this is really a story about greed. With prices so high that they're enjoying record profits despite not producing any more oil while we're paying an arm and a leg to fill up our tanks, they could actually produce less oil and make more profit than they usually make. And that's exactly what they did. Oil company executives promised their shareholders 2% growth, and no matter what, they promised to not increase their production. They want the oil companies to prolong the extraction of oil from their reserves so that they can continue to profit year over year. The CEO of a major oil company, Pioneer Natural Resources, Scott Sheffield, said whether it's $150, $200, or $100 for a barrel of oil, we're not going to change our growth plans. In August, Exxon alone reported a quarterly profit of $17.9 billion. That is the highest quarterly profit reported by any oil company in history. Chevron reported $11.6 billion, Shell reported $11.47 billion, and BP reported $8.45 billion in quarterly profits. If they were raising prices to just account for the economic hits they took during the pandemic, constraints supply, supply chain issues, they would have consistent revenue and consistent profits. But instead, they raise prices for far more than necessary. That's why they're enjoying record profits. They were capitalizing on constrained supply at the beginning, but now they're keeping up with their price gouging to get even richer. So what are they doing with all of this additional profit? Stock buybacks. They are treating the stock market like it's a casino that they're gambling in, but they also get to be the dealers. Stock buybacks are when a company buys up their own stock, leaving less shares on the market for other people to buy. This inflates the earnings per share metric. Higher earnings per share makes the stock look good on Wall Street. Existing shareholders benefit from this because it increases the value of the stock they already own. ExxonMobil announced plans to buy up $30 billion of its own stock by the end of 2023. So there you have it, uh, casino. Uh, the, the fossil fuel industry is basically uh, treating uh, the market as if it's a casino. And by the way, I stand corrected. It's actually $19 billion in profits, $19 billion in profits uh, that Exxon made uh, in the last quarter. You know, what's unbelievable is we're having all of these um, discussions on the threats to democracy right now. And there are real threats. If you watch that as cool, you know, I've told you we don't actually have a democracy. We have an oligarchy, as a 2014 Princeton study told you. Uh, we don't have a. We're supposed to have a representative democracy, but we don't. But when you have all these discussions about democracy, let me ask you: What kind of democracy is it if a fossil fuel industry is so blatantly, blatantly exploiting you? The fossil fuel industry is so blatantly. I mean stealing from you. This is theft. There's no reason for the gas prices to be what it is now. You heard uh, that reporters say it doesn't even matter what the price of a barrel uh, of uh, oil is at this point. They're going to keep their prices high. And there's no actual government response to that to punish these companies. This isn't like a free market. It's a rigged market. And it kills, as Steve Grumbine says, these kind of policies kill 
because the high gas prices people are having to pay, they have to cut uh, they have to cut essential needs elsewhere that they can no longer afford. So when you don't have a, have a functioning government because the government is corrupt, that will pull the corporate welfare and free money that is coming to these fossil fuel companies and being gifted to these fossil fuel companies as these Democrats feign, how are we going to pay for it on health care? How are we going to pay for it on education? How are we going to pay for it on climate investment? Well, certainly no issue paying $15 billion a year, a year in free money to fossil fuel companies. When you don't have a president who is willing to go to the mat against these fossil fuel companies and the Republican Party to say, we are going to institute a windfall tax and let the Republicans explain why they are voting against it. Again, would have been an incredibly popular campaign issue, would have been popular uh, and very quick, very easy to run campaign ads for all these Democratic candidates that it's the Republicans aiding these fossil fuckers in price gouging you at the pump. For some reason, Biden doesn't want to do that. For some reason, Biden uh, refuses to threaten their subsidies, uh, didn't push this months ago, a windfall tax, now kind of sort of is floating it to kind of sound a sort uh, sound populist before the midterms, there's not going to be a windfall tax, whether the Democrats keep the Senate or the Republicans uh, take the House. It's not going to be a windfall tax because we have a filibuster, which is undemocratic, and you have essentially a Republican Party that is blatantly in bed with fossil fuel industry and a Democratic Party that is blatantly in bed with Wall Street, which is the biggest investor in the fossil fuel industry. So unfortunately, don't expect prices to come down. Uh, but do expect a lot of media propaganda on Biden's taking it to the fossil fuel industry. He's not. This is all theater.